chow it. Come on, come on. Eat it, little keep away game. Got him, look at that, upstroke. That was really cool. Man, that's so fun when they do that. Crappies, one of my favorite fish to catch, no doubt. Look at that. I'm fishing with um, two, two members of the ice team that I'm really, really excited about. Scott Seibert and Shelly Holland, and I get to, you know, sit here and tell their story, and we're just wrapping up show number two of Across the Ice Belt with Ice Team, and you can see Joe in the background there. He's packing up. I'm gonna put my gloves on because my hands are a little bit cold, and we are on a pot of crappies right now. I'm looking at a couple, and Scott's got one working. Shelly just caught one. We're having a, a blast out on a lake. In the middle of uh, northern Minnesota, we have ice and we have really good ice. But the crazy thing is, there's Scott back there and there's Shelly. I'm actually going to go and show you the man behind the camera, Joe. He doesn't get a ton of credit for these shows. He he puts a ton of work into uh, standing out in the cold while we can sit in a nice warm fish house usually. I'm going to give the camera to Joe while he's packing up. You can look, he's got a lot here. Take a look. This is uh, kind of a look into some of our camera gear. I don't know if you can see that. There's one camera box. There's another camera box. We got more cameras over there. So it's pretty crazy actually what goes into filming these uh, these shoots. And, and uh, but other than that, we're gonna walk over and you can see we're in our little, little pile. Like we it took us a little while to f find the fish, but we, uh, we wrapped up a really sweet show. Here's Scott, he's got a pile of fish. Scott, I'll have you come over by Shelly. And I get, this show is really cool where we get a fish with the very first professional ice fishing woman and that's Shelly and obviously, and there's Scott and this is the man that's in love with her and has taught her pretty much uh, Almost everything? Oh, definitely, definitely. I liked to fish before, but before, after meeting Scott, it really upped my game and upped my fishing, catching, traveling, adventures, all of it. It's been really great. I mean, the, the great thing is everybody that watches these shows and everything, they don't get to see everything that you guys do as a couple. Right. We stayed at your cabin. This lake is a snowmobile ride away from your cabin, which we took, and this is this is your lifestyle. Fishing is your life, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously we both have full-time jobs during the week, so you know we work hard during the week, and then we yeah. live for our weekends. You know, you yeah. come up here and uh, all these great lakes around the Hackensack area that you know we got the cabin at, and right on. You know, there's you know Leech Lakes close, you know Winnowa Gosh, I mean yeah. Woman Lake. There's just so many lakes that we can try to fish. You know. With such a short time we just you know love doing the adventures yeah that's what we like We're you know you know grateful. how do you want to know how when somebody's addicted to ice fishing you want to want me to tell you how you know one, you just watch them talk while we're talking on camera and w count how many times they look at the Vexlar <laughs> without, <laughs> without, 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 without uh, saying anything. Yeah, it's yeah. You, you'll notice it. I'll probably look at it while I'm talking because yeah. that's how you know when you're addicted to ice fishing. Yeah. But for this shoot, this is going to be a really cool shoot for people to see because we struggled to start it yeah. off, right? Yeah, it's not, uh, you know, it's not easy all the time. You know, we definitely put our time in on different, you know, bodies of water to try finding a good bite. You know, I had had some fish on a, the first spot that we fished. I mean, I had them on the camera. We caught a couple, got out of there, you know, just, you know, waited for the bite. And, um, yeah, we struggled. You know, obviously the ice conditions, you know, the number one thing is uh, we found some thin ice, so we mm -hmm. decided to walk out and not take the snowmobiles out just because of the safety factor. Yeah, you know? the very first lake we pulled up on, Scott and Shelly went out there yesterday and they tested it. And... They uh, use a spud bar and they found four inches. So if you're watching this, th we just filmed the show within a couple of days. Today's date is December 29th today, or December 30th. 30th. I was on today's 30th. The 30th yeah. Today's the 30th, and we uh, so don't just because you see people out fishing, don't assume things are safe. Take take your own precautions, safety yeah. precautions, right? Because yeah. we're still we've seen. A few people break through where you're pushing it. This lake is different. You can see our snowmobiles in the background. This lake, we you found six to six, seven inches, six to seven, yep. and even some spots probably eight yep. inches. I think we gained a little bit. Yep, right on. And so the first lake we wa had to walk all the way out, 
and we failed. And the really cool thing about this show is, is a lot of times it look, makes it look, we make it look like it's a fairy tale, like every time we catch them. But this show actually shows the process, right? Yeah, definitely. It was the real deal. And uh, a thing about that ice being safe too is some of our holes didn't even freeze the next day. Yeah. So you got to be careful with moving water and when yeah. you only have four inches of ice, that's... And then we pulled up on this lake after a beautiful snowmobile ride, pulled up to where you had caught the bluegills the night before. Yep. And nothing, yeah. all these tiny little, little perch, perch, right? Yep. And then what did we do? Then we uh, went on the prowl. We do what we do best, mobility. Yeah. Yeah. Move around, drill holes, and we found the crappies once we start moving around. and. Uh, yeah. And so we have a bunch of crappies down below us, and we have them on the ice because we're going to keep a couple to eat. And and uh, these two are trying to talk me into going fishing these bluegills where we didn't catch them this morning. And I love setting the hook on crappies. They were so nice though, yeah. Jeff. So I think they're going to talk me into it and go try to catch a couple bluegills to hopefully close this show out. If not, we have a tremendous piece. Um, you know, and again, it was the drop kick for... Yeah, I had the drop kick on, uh, Red Glow. It was terrific. Worked great on the crappies. Yeah, the drop kick, it's a really cool... For those that don't know what the drop kick is, and we talk about it more in the show, is is it's a jig that's super versatile. And Dave Ginz has put how many years, did you well, say? Over two years in, into testing and, you know, prototyping, trying to find the right, the right cadence and the right um, size, yep. right hook size and stuff was key to that yeah yeah the hook size all those small little minute details yep. you know there's so much more that goes into a jig a good jig than you would think and and dave has like the perfect rocking cadence and yeah, yeah no definitely. it's uh it's uh it's really good and huh december 30th i think from everybody at ice team we can wish everybody a very merry christmas and also say happy new happy year new from, year to everybody. Yeah, from everybody new year. please be safe on the ice thank you for watching across the ice belt with ice team make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel like us on facebook because guess what you get to do when you like us on facebook you get to send scott a message you get to send shelly message you can ask me a question you can ask dave gins jason mitchell all the ice team pros i mean i could go on and on like us on facebook ask us questions and good luck fishing